Number 17, how many negative real roots does f of x equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus x minus 3 halves? Negative real roots of a polynomial function. Well, if they're real roots, we can see them on a graph. Roots are the zeros of a function. They're the points where f of x equals 0 or y equals 0, again, they're the x-intercepts of the function. Go to your graphing calculator, go to y equals in this function, x to the third plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. I'm just going to go ahead and sketch a graph. We can use the standard zoom that is a negative 10 to positive 10, negative 10 to positive 10 for both x and y. The graph of this cubic function looks something like this. We know that cubic functions must have exactly three zeros, or three roots, because of the fundamental theorem of algebra. It's asking how many negative real roots, so we want to know which of those roots are negative numbers. Those would have to be to the left of the origin, so these two are the negative real roots. There are two. 17 is C. Number 18. Determine the sum of the infinite series 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 six plus 1 24 plus dot dot dot. And this is around to the nearest thousand. So the first thing that I noticed when I saw this problem was the pattern in the denominators. And I was trying to generalize that. If we wrote all these out as terms of a sequence, let's call this one a not and then a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. The first term is 1 over 1. The second term is also 1 over 1. The third term is 1 over 2. And 6, 24, which really all we're given. The pattern that you should notice here is the denominators. 1, 1, 2, 6, 24. There's something very special about all those numbers. They are factorials. We can rewrite every one of these terms. This is actually 1 over 0 factorial. By the way, we're taking the infinite sum, so we do want some plus signs in between these. This is plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial. 24 is 4 factorial. And you can tell where it's going to go from there. We can actually write this out in a very formal way using sigma notation. We're going, we're taking the sum from n equals 0 of the expression 1 over n factorial. And it's the infinite sum, so it goes all the way to infinity. If you're familiar with this is actually a definition of the number e. It's one of the definitions of the number e. Uh, and if you recognize that right off the bat, you can tell that uh, this is going to be uh, answer choice D, since E is approximately 2.71828, uh, and then it goes on. Much like pi, it's an irrational number, it has a bunch of digits, have no pattern. Um, if you didn't know this definition right off the bat, or if you weren't able to get to that, you could really just do a partial sum. If you evaluated Mm, like all the way up to the fourth term, you would get fairly accurate. All the way up to the fifth term, you get fairly accurate. So the calculator, you can actually go into the math menu. There's a new feature that was recently added. And option zero says summation. And we'll give you a sigma notation. You can actually set it up yourself. So if you wanted, you could take the sum n equals zero to some number like 5 of 1 over n factorial. 
it will give you an approximate value. And if you did it for a larger value, 1 over n factorial, because we only need to round to the thousands place. We don't need to go to very high numbers. If you go to 10, you get the calculator to approximate that. Let's get a couple of values there. The partial sum up to 5 is already 2.7 seven one seven if we round to the thousandth place. And if you calculate the partial sum up to ten we get very, very accurate. Two point seven one eight. Uh and it actually does go to eight one eight but, but, but it's it's accurate to E up to that point. E it just gone up to uh just summing 10 of these terms will get you a very accurate result. So the answer is D, and that number is the number E, which is also called Euler's number, uh, the base of the natural logarithm.